Welcome in the name of God, from whom and with whom and to whom we journey. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Marjo Anderson of Salem Lutheran Church in Bridgeport, Connecticut in the United States. While our offices are closed at present, you can always find us at our website, salembridgeport.org, on our Facebook page, Salem Bridgeport, and on our YouTube channel, Salem Lutheran Church, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Scripture urges us to give thanks in all circumstances. And that means that even in the midst of lamenting our losses over this past year, we give thanks for the innumerable blessings that we have received. One of those blessings is that because we have learned to worship online, we can now gather with all of our Lutheran family from across New England every few months. What a joy that has been over this past year and what a joy it is today. Before I turn our worship over to Bishop Hazelwood and other leaders from our Synod, let me make a few quick announcements. This week, we continue our Lenten Adventures in Prayer on Zoom on Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. and Thursday at 10.30 a.m. with our friends from our Savior's Lutheran Church in Fairfield, Genesis Gospel Cafe here in Bridgeport, and Cross of Christ Lutheran Church in Waterbury. On Saturday at 11 o'clock, we are invited to join Genesis interview chat and chew on Zoom. Next Sunday at 930, Salem will be worshiping in person and streaming to Facebook Live. And also next Sunday, please put this on your calendar at 7 p.m. We will be joining Genesis, our saviors, St. Michael's from New Canaan, and St. Andrew's from Ridgefield in a very special service of lament and hope as we mark the one year anniversary of the pandemic lockdown here in our state. To access any of those events or our worship bulletin or our donate page, just go to salembridgeport.org slash live. And now Bishop Hazelwood. Welcome to this worship service provided to you by myself, associates to the bishop, and leaders in the New England Synod. This worship service for the season of Lent is provided as an opportunity to connect all of us during this time of a COVID pandemic. It's also an opportunity for your leadership to have a break. Many have said that these are challenging times and they are challenging times for our worship leaders as well. This worship service is designed around baptism, our welcome into baptism, and a reminder of those aspects of baptism is a helpful introduction. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Those are helpful reminders of when we are baptized, we are freed in Christ, and we are called in to those responsibilities. As we enter this time of worship, I invite you now to pause and center your body. You might wish to settle comfortably into your chair, put your feet flat on the ground, close your eyes if you feel comfortable, and I invite you to bring attention to your breath. Feel the air going in and out. It is the breath of God. It is the spirit of God promised in baptism. 
Your breath is holy. It is the breath of God. It is that breath that connects us to one another and to all living things. Though we are not gathered now in person for worship, we remain connected one to another through the Spirit of God moving and breathing in us. It is the Spirit that helps us to live among God's faithful people, even when we cannot gather in person. As you continue to bring awareness to your breath, let it remind you of the whole communion of saints who are gathered even now in ways that we cannot see. Let it remind you of your deep connection to God and to one another. As we worship now, I invite you to keep coming back to your breath. And as you do, to remember that great communion of saints gathered with you in worship across time and space. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us turn to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace by the saving power of Jesus Christ the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. And 
and robes of joy and peace. Rejoicing in God's promised song, our treasure and our song. In faith we cling and gladly sing to Christ we Let us pray. God of wilderness and water, your son was baptized and tempted as we are. Guide us through this season that we may not avoid struggle, but open ourselves to blessing through the cleansing depths of repentance and the heaven rending words of the spirit. Amen. Lectura del profeta Miqueas, capítulo 6. ¿Con qué me presentaré ante Jehová y adoraré al Dios Altísimo? ¿Me presentaré ante él con holocausto, con becerros de un año? ¿Se agradará Jehová de millares de carneros o de diez mil arroyos de aceite? ¿Daré mi primogénito por mi rebelión, el fruto de mis entrañas, por el pecado de mi alma? ¡Hombre! Él te ha declarado lo que es bueno, lo que pide Jehová de ti solamente, hacer justicia, amar misericordia y humillarte ante tu Dios. Palabra de Dios, palabra de vida. And I'd like to share these readings of excerpts from Michael, uh, Bishop Michael Curry's sermon, The Power of Love. Someone once said that Jesus began the most revolutionary movement in human history, a movement grounded in the unconditional law, love of God for the world, and a movement mandating people to live that love, and in doing so to change not only their lives, but the very life of the world itself. He didn't die for anything he could get out of it. Jesus did not get an honorary doctorate for dying. He didn't. He wasn't getting anything out of it. He gave up his life. He sacrificed his life for the good of others. For the good of the other, for the well-being of the world, for us. Uh, that's what love is. Love is not selfish and self-centered. Love it can be sacrificial and in doing so becomes redemptive. And that way of unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive love changes lives, and it can change this world. If you don't believe me, just stop and imagine. Think and imagine a world where love is the way. Imagine our homes and families where love is the way. Imagine neighborhoods and communities where love is the way. Imagine governments and nations where love is the way. Imagine business and commerce where love is the way. Imagine a tiled old world where love is the way. When love is the way, unselfish, sacrificial, and redemptive. When love is the way, then no child will go to bed hungry in this world ever again. When love is away, we will let justice roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness an everlasting and ever flowing brook. When love is away, poverty will become history. When love is away, the earth 
will be a sanctuary. When love is away, we will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside to study war no more. When love is away, there's plenty good room, plenty good room for all God's children. Because when love is away, we actually treat each other, well, like we're actually family. from Ephesians. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us has been given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us comes to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. It's called, And the Waters Will Flow from Your Altar, Lord, by Samain Monteiro from Brazil. And the waters will flow from your altar, Lord, and flow, flood the earth, and we will be like a garden watered, cared for, exposed to life. Oh, let these waters come, impetuous and pure, and destroy the powers and clean the path, which my people will take, which my people will take, which my people will take. Singing and rejoicing in an endless celebration, the world, life, freedom, and the resurrection. And the waters will flow from the altar, Lord, and clean away the depths, and clean away the debris. And we will have courage to act, to serve, to change the world. And the waters will flow from your altar, Lord. Life will be rekindled, and we will see the new creation. Act of your love. Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the last day of the festival, the great day, 
while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Have you ever been really, really thirsty? I mean, super thirsty, like on a hot, hot summer day when you're outside at the beach or playing with friends, helping to clean up the yard. Maybe you've gone on a hike or you're out jogging. And all you can think about is getting a nice, cold drink of water. I don't know about you, but when I get like that, I might start to get cranky. I get tired. Uh, I might even get a headache if I don't get some water soon. Well, we get cranky and don't feel well when we're thirsty like that because it's our body's way of telling us to stop and pay attention. Because on a hot, hot day when we're working or running around a lot, we can get dehydrated and that's not healthy at all. Our bodies need water to function well and live. So our brain gives us some signals. It tells us it's time to stop and take a drink. And do you remember how good that sip of water tastes when you're really, really thirsty like that? Mm -mm, it is the best thing ever. And then you feel so much better. Pastor Rodriguez is going to talk about water as well. Jesus as living water, pouring God's love into you and into me, so much love that it overflows right out into the world. And sometimes, just like when we get thirsty for water on a hot, hot summer day, we find ourselves running on empty. But Jesus promises us that God will always be there, loving us, filling us up to overflowing. Think for a minute what it looks like when God's love overflows through you. Do you think it looks like a smile? Maybe it's a hug or a kind word. It might be a drawing or a phone call or even a letter. Maybe it's sharing something that you love with someone else. I bet there are all kinds of ways that God's love flows through you. But sometimes we might not notice it. I have an idea that might help us notice. Next time you turn on the faucet or reach for a glass of water, think about how God's love is filling you up and how you would like to share that love with someone else. Then take just a moment and pray. Dear God, thank you for water. Thank you for life. Thank you for loving us so much that it overflows. Help me to share that love today, wherever I go. Amen. Dios, derrama tu gracia y tu bendición sobre nosotros. Lord, please shed your love, uh, your word within us. Porque, para que tu palabra que salga de nuestros labios. So that the words that comes out of our mouths. Lleguen a los oyentes. May reach the listeners. Y reciban tu bendición. And they may receive your blessing. Amén. 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 Hoy quisiéramos... Aprovechar esta ocasión this, we would like to take advantage of this time para hablar brevemente sobre nuestro bautismo. To take a moment to speak about our baptism. Pero más que 
eh, hablar sobre el significado del bautismo. And moreover, uh, to speak about the meaning of the, the baptism. Queremos hablar acerca de lo que nosotros llamamos afirmación del bautismo. We would like to talk about the affirmation of our baptism. Nuestra iglesia, en la iglesia luterana, Or acostumbramos. In um, our Lutheran church, we, we are accustomed eh, recordar nuestra afirmación de fe en diferentes modos. We like to reaffirm our faith, our baptism in different ways. Lo hacemos a través del rito de la confirmación. We do it in the ritual of the confirmation. Bautizamos niños. We baptize kids. Los instruimos. We instruct them. Especialmente en tiempo de, de cuaresma. Especially in um, Lent. Lent. Y a la edad de cuando ya son teenager. And then when they are teenagers. Celebramos lo que llamamos el rito de confirmación. Then we celebrate what uh, is called confirmation. Pero también nosotros acostumbramos a... Eh, celebrar eh, nuestra afirmación de bautismo. But we are accustomed to celebrating our uh, the, um, the confirmation or the reaffirmation of, of our baptism. Cuando eh, recibimos un nuevo miembro eh, en nuestra iglesia. We also do it when we receive a new member in our church. Lo hacemos también cuando alguien que eh, ha estado ausente por mucho tiempo fuera de todas las actividades de la iglesia y regresa. We also do it when a person who has been away from the church for a very long time and they return. Hace, hacemos un rito de afirmación de bautismo. We do a ritual of um, affirmation of baptism. Porque para nosotros es muy importante recordar continuamente Because for us, it's very important to continuously remember este gran regalo que recibimos de Dios. this great gift that we received from God. Con el bautismo, nosotros eh, fuimos declarados hijos de Dios. With the baptism, we were declared children of God. Con el bautismo, nosotros eh, recibimos una nueva identidad. With baptism, we receive a new identity. Y usted y yo sabemos lo importante que es la identidad. And you and I know how important is our identity. Y hoy en día, uno de los grandes, una de las grandes crisis que tenemos es la crisis de identidad. One of the biggest crises that we have right now is the crisis of identity. Hemos perdido el sentido, el significado de quiénes somos. We have lost the meaning of who we are. Y por eso tenemos tanto problemas de rechazo, de exclusiones. That's why we have so many problems of exclusion and um, isolation. Tenemos problemas de racismo. The problem of racism. De gente que piensan que son superiores a otros por el color, por la raza. People who think that they are better than others because of their color or their race. Todos esos, todas esas dificultades revelan una realidad muy cruda, muy dura. All of these problems reveal a very raw reality. Es eh, la realidad de lo que llamamos crisis de identidad. It's what we call the crisis of identity. Hemos olvidado quiénes somos realmente. We have forgotten who we really are. Necesitamos recordar que somos hijos de Dios todos. We need to remember that we are all children of God. Y si estamos conscientes de esa identidad. And if we are conscious of that reality. Vamos a recibir la bendición de eh, relacionarnos como iguales. We will be able to receive the blessing of being able to relate with one another as equal. Nadie va a sentirse superior al otro. No one is going to feel superior to the other. Somos hijos de Dios. We are all children of God. Así que la afirmación de bautismo. So the affirmation of baptism. 
nos, nos mantiene alerta. Maintains us or keeps us alert. Recordar quiénes somos. Remembering who we are. Es una bendición. Is a blessing. Y esa bendición. And that blessing. Tenemos que hacer la realidad cada día. And we have to make that a reality day by day. Los reformadores. The reformationers or reformers. Re insistían. Would insist. Que uno de los elementos del bautismo más poderoso that one of the most powerful elements of baptism es el agua. is the water. El agua la tenemos por todas partes. Because we have water everywhere. Por lo tanto, ellos insistían que nosotros debemos aprovechar and ese elemento so that's why they would insist that we use that element of water para recordar nuestro bautismo. To remember our baptism. Cada vez que nos demos un baño, recordemos el bautismo nuestro. Every time we shower, to remember our baptism. Cada vez que nos lavamos la mano, recordemos nuestro bautismo. Every time we wash our hands, to remember our baptism. Cada vez que veamos que llueve, recordemos nuestro bautismo. Every time it rains, remember our baptism. Así que me llama la atención el pasaje de la escritura que acabamos de leer. So it calls to my attention, it, it calls my attention, this passage that we just read from the Bible. El, el Señor usa la imagen del agua. God uses, the, the Lord uses that image of water. Y dice que todo el que cree, todo el que tiene sed, dice que recibirá el agua viva. And it says that everyone who's thirsty and everyone who believes will receive the living waters. Pero una agua que va a fluir But eh, a water that's going to flow a, abundantemente. Abundantly. ¿Y cuál, qué significa esa agua que fluye desde de nuestro ser, desde de nuestro, de nuestros adentro? ¿Qué significa eso? What does it mean for something, some uh, water to flow from within us? What does it mean abundantly? Eso significa... El amor incondicional de Dios. That means the unconditional love of God. Eso significa su misericordia, su bondad. This means his um, abundant uh, mercy upon us. Por nosotros. For us. Pero que ese amor de Dios se hace tan real en la vida nuestra. But this abundant love is becomes so real in our lives. Que nos llena. That fills us. Y así como vemos que puede fluir el agua de una copa que después de llena, seguimos echando agua. Uh, the same way that when you pour water into a glass and it overflows. Eso permite que nosotros podamos eh, compartir ese amor. That allows us to continue to share that love with others. Esa generosidad de Dios. That generosity of God. Con otros. With others. El obispo Curi, el obispo episcopal, uh, episcopal uh, uh, bishop, en un sermón, eh, en su, uno de sus sermones, in one of his sermons, sobre el tema el poder del amor, about the power of love, y él nos dice, and he tells us, que Jesús comenzó un movimiento del amor, that Jesus began a movement about love. Y nos pinta una imagen muy poderosa. And he painted this image, a very powerful image. ¿Qué hubiera sido del mundo si todos fuéramos dominados por el poder del amor? What if all the world was dominated by the power of love? ¿Dónde estuviera el odio? Where would hate be? ¿Dónde estuviera la violencia? Where would violence be? ¿Dónde estuvieran las divisiones? Where would divisions be? Jesús... Con este eh, pasaje que acabamos de leer y con ese sermón que predicó el obispo Curi. Uh, with that message and this passage that we just finished re uh, reading and the message that uh, the Bishop Curi said. Nos invita. That invites us. To be, para ser parte de ese movimiento. To be part of that movement. Del movimiento del amor. The movement about love. Pero no cualquier amor. But not just any kind el of love. El amor incondicional. The unconditional love. El amor que es expresado a cambio de nada. The, the love that's expressed and it's changed for nothing. El amor sacrificial. The love that's sacrificial. Y cuando nosotros entonces hacemos nuestra afirmación de fe. And so when we reaffirm our faith. Nos eh, recordamos we remember de que esa es la vocación cristiana más importante para that nosotros. Is the biggest voc Christian vocation that we have. 
eh, comprometernos más profundamente. To be compromised with, um, uh, with be ourselves compromised con esa revolución de amor. With that revolution of love. Eh, eh, peleando por la justicia. Fighting for justice. Acompañando al pobre en su sufrimiento. Accompanying the poor in their suffering. Recordando nuestro pacto bautismal. Remembering our pact in baptism. De estar en comunidad. And of being in community. De orar el uno por el otro. And praying one for the other. De compartir el cuerpo de Cristo todos juntos. And sharing the body of Christ all together. Vamos a, a, a tomar esa figura de hoy, del evangelio de hoy. Let's take that figure of what we of the gospel that we read today. Para mantenerla en nuestra mente y nuestro corazón. To keep it in our minds and in our hearts. Y recordar que ese amor que Dios ha puesto en nosotros. And remembering that that love that God has put inside of us. Nunca se seca. Never goes dry. Porque es como agua que fluye dentro de nosotros. Because there are like flowing waters that come from within us. Abundantemente. Abundantly. Y esto nunca termina. And this will never end. Que Dios nos ayude. May God help us. Amen.
One way we can serve all people following the example of Jesus is to ensure that children and adults have food and other opportunities. We are focusing this calendar year on world hunger projects in Rwanda and Malawi. Through the generosity of others, we will match congregational giving to this effort with up to $100 per congregation. We will be providing nutritious food, pens and notebooks so kids can succeed in school, and mattresses so children do not have to sleep on the floor. We'll be supplying equipment and tools for youth to get training in welding and tailoring. Women will be able to get loans to expand business ventures. Children will be able to get needed food and medical checkups and treatment. A focus on health education in primary schools will keep children healthy and going to school. A community health and treatment center will provide awareness, skills, and empowerment. Please donate through your church. Your church treasurer can send a check to the New England Synod with WH Rwanda and Malawi 2021 in the memo line. Or the funds can be sent online through the New England Synod website, nelutherans.org slash donate. Please indicate WH Rwanda and Malawi 2021 in the special instructions line. Thank you. Thank you. Let's turn our hearts and minds to God in prayer. God of the cross and the lynching tree, of the jail cell and the street corner, of the Bible study and the police car, look upon the world you have made. See how it is full of hatred and how violence inhabits the earth. Gunshots ring out under the heavens that declare your glory, singing the destruction of your children. Do you not hear the songs? How long, O oh God, will you keep silence? How long will we fail to be your voice? The streets and sidewalks of your dwelling place flow with blood, pouring out the cries of your beloved ones. Do you not hear the cries? How long, O oh God, will you keep silence? How long will we fail to be your voice? The breaths snatched from lungs swirl on wind that blew creation to life, echoing with the last gasps of your dear ones. Do you not hear the gasps? How long, O oh God, will you keep silence? How long will we fail to be your voice? The bones that you knit together in a mother's womb are broken, rattling with the earth-shaking suffering of your people. Do you not hear the rattling? How long, O oh God, will you keep silence? How long will we fail to be your voice? The clanging of cell doors resounds amidst the music of the spheres tolling the lives stolen by systemic oppression and unspeakable violence. Do you not hear the tolling? How long, O oh God, will you keep silence? How long will we fail to be your voice? The crashing of fire-licked windows mingles with the praise and prayers of generations, shattering the refuge and safety of your sanctuaries. Do you not hear the shattering? How long, O oh God, will you keep silence? How long will we fail to be your voice? How long? How long? How long? How long? How long? In these days, as in days past, Mothers and grandmothers have become mourners. Fathers and grandfathers have become grievers. Children have become wanderers in vacant rooms. Kinfolk have become pallbearers. Communities have become filled with empty chairs. Remember the people you have redeemed, Holy One. Remember the work of salvation brought about by your love. You make a way out of no way. Arise, O God, and defend your own cause. 
raise up in us the cries of outrage. You made water to flow in the desert for Hagar and Ishmael when they were driven out. Arise, O God, and defend your own cause. Raise up in us commitment to the long struggle for justice. You cast out demons so that people might be restored to community. Arise, O God, and defend your own cause. Raise up in us the determination to drive out racism, even from ourselves. You witnessed the death of your beloved child. Arise, O God, and defend your own cause. Raise up in us the grief that cannot be comforted. You brought new life from the crucifixion of state violence and the wounds of abandonment. Arise, O God, and defend your own cause. Raise up in us the courage to speak truth to power and hope to hatred. God of the ones with hands up and the ones who can't breathe, look upon the world you have made. Do not forget your afflicted people forever so that we might praise your holy name with joyful lips. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Let us pray for those who are suffering, they're affirming their baptism, and for all the baptized everywhere, that they may be redeemed from all evil and rescued from the way of sin and death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may be op may open their hearts to the grace and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That they may be kept in the faith and common in communion of your holy church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That they may be sent into the world in witness to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That they may be brought to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Amantísimo Padre que moras en lo alto, Señor, te damos gracias, mi Señor. Gracias, Padre, por permitirnos estar aquí reunido una vez más en tu nombre, Señor. Padre Santo, te pido en el nombre de Jesús que bendiga a cada hogar representado aquí, Señor. Bendice nuestra comunidad de fe, Señor. Te pedimos por todos los enfermos de cáncer, Señor. Ten misericordia de ellos, Padre Santo. Te ponemos este país, Señor. Te ponemos... Este virus, Padre, que está acabando con la vida humana, Señor, y te pedimos en el nombre de Jesús que dé fortaleza a aquellas personas que han perdido un ser querido, mi Señor. Señor, gracias te damos por este día, mi Señor. Bendice, Señor, en el nombre de Jesús, tu pueblo, Señor. Bendice tus hijos, Padre Santo. Gracias, mi Dios. Todo esto te lo pedimos en el nombre poderoso de Jesús. Amén y amén. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God's peace passes all understanding. It also overcomes pandemics and our inability to gather in person to share that peace. Take this moment to serve others and be served by others by sharing that peace. Share it with others gathered with you, whether in person or online. Share a word of peace on social media. Send a word of peace in a note in the mail. Plan to make a phone call after worship. However you do it, don't keep that peace to yourself. And know this, God's peace is with you now, with you this day, with you always.
One of the ways we serve all people is sharing the resources and gifts we have. Take this moment to offer in service to God and in service to your neighbors some of the gifts you have. We encourage you to pause and share your financial gifts with your local congregation, whether going online or, or writing out a check. We encourage you to consider as you are able a gift of individual mission support to support the work of the New England Synod by going to nelutherans.org backslash donate or mail a check to New England Synod at P.O. Box 13, Worcester, Massachusetts, 01614. We also encourage you to share other gifts with your neighbors. How is God calling you through your baptism to serve all people following the example of Jesus? Restore in us, O God, the splendor of your love. Renew your image in our hearts, and all our sins remove. O Spirit, wake in us the wonder of your power. Unfurl our lives like springtime bud and flower. Bring us, O oh Christ, to share the fullness of your joy. Baptize us in the risen life that death cannot destroy. Three person God fulfill the promise of your grace that we when all our searching ends may see you face to face. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Take a moment now, as we prepare to be sent forth from worship, to consider how you have experienced that love from God in your own life this week. What has filled you with a sense of wholeness and peace? When were the moments where you felt full to bursting? Now pause to consider how that grace might flow from you to work towards justice and peace in all the earth. Which of your neighbors, near or far, are in need of your care? Where do you have influence to change systems that exclude or discriminate? Is there a place of conflict in which you can speak truth and love with a strong and peaceful heart? Striving for justice and peace in all the earth sounds like a big task. It is. It's an ongoing and never ending task. But I invite you now to consider one thing that you can commit to in the week ahead that allows you to live out your baptismal identity and encourage the work of justice and peace. Write it down and place it on your bedside table or on your desk. Put a reminder on your calendar or in your phone. Or choose one small item to remind you that you can carry around in your pocket. 
whatever method works for you. Pause and make that commitment now. Trusting that God will fill you with what you need to live out your baptismal call in the world. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you eternal peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Where justice rolls down like a mighty water And righteousness grows like an ever-flowing stream And mercy resounds like the waves on the ocean Let praises rise high on the songs of the redeemed There is a river that streams from the temple Begins as a trickle but ends in the sea As it grows, healing it will give Where it flows, everything will Justice rolls down like a mighty water, and righteousness grows like an ever-flowing stream, and mercy resounds like the waves on the ocean. Let praises rise high on the songs of the redeemed. and feel the strong current remember the stagnance of stale life before god is here leave the past behind in these clear waters you will find where justice rolls down like a mighty water And righteousness grows like an ever-flowing stream And mercy resounds like the waves on the ocean Let praises rise high on the songs of the Justice rolls down like a mighty water And righteousness grows like an ever-flowing stream And mercy resounds like the waves on the ocean Let praises rise high on the songs of the redeemed let praises rise high on the songs of the redeemed.